Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. Tarzan has organized and taken charge of the James Gregory expedition for the purpose of tracing, if possible, Gregory's son, Brian, the lost archaeologist. Atan Tom, a suave, highly cultured Oriental, believes Tarzan to be the missing scientist. Wolf, a corrupt guide, and Magra, an Eurasian girl, both tools of Tom, have attached themselves to the Gregory party in order to gain possession of a map showing the location of the forbidden city of Asher, which Tom believes Tarzan has. On a Congo riverboat, the night before the party is due to arrive at Bonga, the starting point of the safari into the jungle, a mysterious message falls at the feet of Darno. It is the following morning. The boat is docked at Bonga. Larson, the Swede hunter, is actively in charge of the unloading of the supplies and equipment. Ashore, Tarzan is directing the natives. Mango, Poso. You old man work like Tiki Tiki. Shoot, shoot. On the fringe of this scene of mad excitement, Helen Gregory stands with her father and Lieutenant Darno. Look, Lieutenant, it's just like a three ring circus. Tarzan certainly understands how to handle natives. May we? The jungle and the natives are like an open book to Tarzan. But if you, Monsieur Gregory, had not made previous arrangements through Monsieur Mitchell, we might have been tied up here for weeks. Wolf, the hunter, and the Magra stand together behind a shed at the end of the dock. You will ruin everything with your idea of course, Wolf. We can only get the map through diplomacy. Diplomacy? Ach, bah. Just leave it to me, Magra. There's only one way, and that is force. Landing of supplies is finished. Tarzan has assigned the last of the bills and boxes to the waiting bearers, and the head of the safari is just leaving the little river town of Bonga to plunge into the jungle. Well, Tarzan, we've been making a good beginning, and we are off in third of blue. Yes, Larson, but we camp early tonight. These people aren't used to jungle travel. A good idea. And I know you're the place for the first camp. All right. Go ahead then, and from now on, you'll take charge of camp bearers and leaders. Yes, yeah, sure. You have everything right in the Yiffy. If Nelson is to take the lead, Tarzan, might be a good idea for me to bring up the rear, uh, to keep an eye out for lost equipment on medieval stragglers, huh? Yes, Wolf, and you might as well keep that position. Now that I know that we're underway, let's catch up with the others. Uh, Passe vite, mon vieux. I have a little surprise for you. What is it? On the boat last night, when you and the others had gone to bed, Larson came to me with a story about Wolf. He is suspicious of the German. How so? Wolf told Larson all about the map of Asher. Hmm, the map again, huh? And while Larson was talking, someone threw a note at my feet. Threw a note at your feet? Yes, tied around a block of wood. What did it say? I have it here in my pocket. I, I shall show it to you. Uh, Tonnerre! Well? It is gone. Are you sure you put it in your pocket? Positive, in, in this one. Well, what did it say? Just two words. Watch. Wolf. Who threw the note? I have been thinking about it. There is only one person who might wish to warn us in that particular manner, and you know who it is as well as I. Magra. Vraiment. 
And it most certainly corroborates Larson's story. But why would Margaret send the warning that day when she could have told either of us in the morning? I do not know, unless... Unless she is afraid of Wolf. In that case, Darno, we'll do as the note says. Watch Wolf. Now let's catch the others. Yeah, but... But you are nervous, mon ami. Is it because of what I have just told you? Oh, no. It, it's these clothes. They're tight and uncomfortable. I, I can't move freely in them. <laughs> Put it. But civilization demands you keep them on, at least until the others have become accustomed to your jungle habits. Uh, civilization. That's why I'm in the jungle again, to get away from your civilization, which breeds such men as Tom, Wolf, and Lal Tos. Oui, comprends, Tarzan. Ah, but look, Mademoiselle Hélène seems to be awaiting us beside the trail there. Why are you lagging behind the others, mademoiselle? Purposely, Lieutenant Darno. I wanted to speak to you and Tarzan. What is it, Miss Gregory? Well, it's about Dad. One of the chief reasons for my being here is to look after him. This is all bound to be new to him, you know, and, and perhaps difficult. I understand. And for that reason, we're traveling only a short distance today. In fact, we shall soon arrive at our first camp, mademoiselle, which Larson is already preparing. Riverboat, which is just at Luango, Tom and Lal Tosk are seated together in its stern, discussing their plans for following Tarzan and the Gregory expedition. Is it not possible that we will arrive in Bunga before Brian Gregory's expedition has entered the jungle, Atan? Hmm, that is very unlikely, Lal Tosk. Gregory, eager to get underway, will permit no delays. Certainly, his object is to reach what he believes to be Tuenbaka, the mountain wherein our share is said to be hidden as quickly and secretly as possible. And Magra, if she fails to attach to their party? Magra will not fail me. She's clever. <laughs> you have never given her due credit, my friend. Yet, if she fails? In that case, she will await us at Banga, and we shall follow the Gregory party as we have planned a day or two behind them. When do you propose to overtake Brian Gregory? Not until he is close to his destination. And how are we to learn when that will be? That will be for you to find out. It will be your duty to keep in touch with Magra if she is with them, or Wolf if she is not. That will have to be done at night. Brian Gregory will certainly watch his back trail during the day. As I would if I were in his place. <laughs> However, we have merely to exercise care in our movements, and he need never know that we are following him. At my suggestion, Wolf will bring up the rear of Gregory's party. Which should make it less difficult and dangerous to Wolf or Magra. Dangerous? In what way? Because Brian Gregory is already suspicious of us. He is resourceful and powerful as a water buffalo. I know. He nearly killed me the other night. The hotel. And you are not anxious to come to grips with him again, eh? Is that it, eh? <laughs> if it happens again, I shall kill him. You will not kill Brian Gregory, my friend. At least not until the Mabashir is in my hands or until he has found the way into Tuenbaka. You understand? I shall protect myself Do against... Do you understand? I... I understand that, Tantum. Meanwhile, a few miles above Bonga, the Gregory Safari is making its first camp in the African jungle. The soft, velvety blackness of night has crept out of the forest and settled densely about the thorn boma encircling the encampment of whites and blacks. The chatter of monkeys and the commotion of birds dies away to give place to the wild calls of savage life awakening to the hunt. The Gregory party has gathered about its campfire after supper for a few last moments talking in for the night. Hey, Yemeni, listen to that fella. I bet you he's been hungry. I've heard that lions or any of the big cats won't bother a man unless they are hungry. But <laughs> when they sing out like that, I'd rather be up a good high tree. Uh, in the melee jungles, they've seen tigers go up trees. Oh, good heavens, I didn't know lions and tigers could climb trees. I've never heard of that. Is it a fact, Tarzan? Well, there are no tigers in Africa, but I have seen Numa reach the lower branches of a small tree. Numa? 
What animal is that? New mummy, Mother Magra, is what the great... Uh, a certain tribe of jungle dwellers call the lion. The natives call him Simba. Hey, Jiminy, that fella been close. He sounds like a big one, too. Uh, is, is there any danger, Tarzan? No. Mm, not if we stay inside the boma. Uh, I wouldn't want to be outside that thorn fence and meet Mr. Leo. You are afraid of Numa, of the lion's wolf, huh? <laughs> With a good rifle in my hands and plenty of distance between us, no. Well, I hope they leave us alone. I'm not at all anxious to meet them. Even with a good rifle. No, I, my dear. The closest I have ever been to a lion or ever wished to be is on the outside of a good, strong cage with a lion inside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Mr. Gregory. Lions are beautiful, but from a distance only. Yes, yeah, sure. And they won't bother you if you leave them alone. Look, the natives. They are beginning to dance. Looks like they're getting ready for a powwow of some kind. They are merely celebrating the fact that they are employed, Monsieur Gregory. Uh, and they'll keep it up all night. Not in chilling November. November? Native beer, mademoiselle. It's quite the usual thing among native barrows. And we may be here for two, three days, waiting for them to get over the effects of their yak. Yeah, uh, better put a stop to it before they go too far. Leave them alone, Wolf. Their celebration won't hold us up. Yeah, but my God, Tarzan, if they fill themselves up with that stuff, they won't be worth a penny in the morning. I'll take care of that. Look at that big black fellow, whirling like a pinwheel. He'll be getting out of his way. Oh, the fellow's getting pretty excited. They see that he is. He must think there is no need of frightening Monsieur Gregory and the ladies. Keep quiet, nothing. That big boy is going to run amok. He has picked up a spear and is shaking it at us. Oh, then, that fellow is coming straight for our fire. I'm going to poke that boy. Put that gun away, Wolf. Put that gun away. Oh, no, but Tarzan. Lieutenant, you better get the women out of the way. Put that gun away, Wolf. You two, Larson. Stay where you are, everybody. But Tarzan, you have a weapon. Hey, ye man, take this gun. Now, put it away and stand back. Dono, take care of the women. Bring up! 